Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And uh, this is a show where we demystify technology for you. You know, your smartphones, your mobile lifestyle gadgets, your laptops. And today, we're going to demystify uh, a, a technology I think I'm, I'm pretty astounded at over the last few years because it's become mass market. And that is? GPS. GPS, Global Positioning System. You know, satellites in the sky that help you navigate your way through the world. Do, do we have tinfoil here somewhere? Because I think... You want to protect your head. Wait, oh, it's not going to be that kind of satellite. It won't be. No, it okay, can't good. see you. It can't see you do the bad things that you do. Good, 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 good. Yeah, so, so we, 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 we know a while back we did a How GPS Works, and so you can actually go back into our archives and check that out, um, where I think we used, well, we used watermelons we used or something like that. We used melons and uh, icing and... All kinds of nasty things like that. tomatoes or something for satellites? I forget. Could yeah. be. But anyway, uh, it's worth updating this episode because, of course, things have changed in the world of, of GPS. You're no longer is it just a, a, a dash-mounted device in your car or an integrated thing into your, an option in your, in your luxury vehicle. It is, uh, you know, it's on mobile phones. It's on all kinds of other gadgets and that sort of thing. And there are different technologies that allow the positioning to occur. So we thought we'd go through the various pieces, you know, help you understand that. So when you do go out and buy a GPS, that you know the pitfalls of the various technologies and, uh, you know, what works and what doesn't. So yes. All right, so uh, exciting episode coming up, so we hope you enjoy it. Uh, so let's take a break, and when we come back, GPS uh, demystified, I guess, part two. Before we get started, of course, I want to talk to you about our sponsor, Hover.com, you know, uh, a sister company uh, here at, at Two Cows. Um, and uh, boy, but what a great one. Uh, these guys um, offer you domains and they help you to use the domains effectively. So you want a .com or a .ca or .net or .tv or a .whatever, these guys will provide it to you for a really affordable price, great service, um, all kinds of extended services. You can use vanity email as an add-on. You can point it to other domains. You can do all kinds of really cool stuff. And so you and I are both customers, of course. We are. We, uh, we like them a lot. The, the gang that actually answers the phone sits out of, outside of my office. Uh, and I'm good friends with the general manager, they come highly recommended. They are good people, they are trustworthy, and you'll really enjoy using their service. You know, not like the other crazy competitors out there, we can't, can't get hold of them, bad service, you know, uh, rock bottom prices perhaps, but you know what, you pay for what you get, really in that world. So if you want a, a zero hassle experience, go on over to hover.com. I'm gonna give you 10% off here with this coupon to get you started. Excellent. All right, good. So let's get in with GPS demystified part two, I guess. Mm -hmm. Would be fair enough to call it part two? I guess so. We'll cover, edition, yeah, we'll cover a little bit of the basics here again. Just, uh, just you know, bring people things up to that speed. We go Less melons and less icing all over the place, though, okay. I think. All right, all right, we'll do that. So, uh, so let's start with GPS. What is GPS? GPS, as you mentioned off the top, is Global Positioning Systems. So back in the day, the military put up a bunch of satellites uh, all around the world. There was uh, 33 of them, I believe, and uh, they... Uh, put them up there and basically sent signals down so that people on the ground, at that point military personnel, could look up and see these satellites and uh, locate themselves on the surface of the Earth by looking up to see which of the three or four satellites they could find and uh, triangulating their position uh, using those satellites and their signal strengths to figure out where they are on the surface of the Earth. Right. And in the mid 80s, you know, the, I don't know if you, if you, guys, if you remember this, Sean, but uh, you know, Korea uh, Airlines uh, Flight double, uh, 007 actually, was flying over um, Japan and actually part of Russian territory or Soviet Union territory and got shot down, shot down by the Soviet, Soviet uh, Air Force. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, because back in the day, there was, they weren't using GPS as a navigation system for commercial airlines or for, for private individuals. It was a military technology only. Mm -hmm. and Ronald Reagan decided to open up technology to uh, civil aviation and that sort of thing, uh, as well as, in the end, consumers to allow everybody to use it to avert that, because had they been reporting in in a much more timely way and been tracking it in a real-time way, that, that upset wouldn't have happened. Yeah, and because of that, uh, obviously it uh, had an immediate uh, benefit for commercial fleets, so you could track where your uh, trucks were, and you could track where you are, make sure that you're not straying over Russian territory. Uh, but uh, obviously, the, the, once they got that into the hands of average consumers as well, that uh, opened up an entire new world of applications. That's right, absolutely. So. And, you know, here in the last few years, of course, we've had you know, handheld devices under 200 bucks that will allow you to do perfect navigation. So it's been a real revolution, I think, in terms of, you know, a piece of technology that was, you know, military technology and now is available to everybody here. Mm -hmm. So um, there are three different technologies I think we want to talk about today, you know, uh, in terms of uh, uh, how we use, use uh, it. Let's start with, uh, well, let's go through each one of them. All right. So starting with GPS, GPS. Right? GPS. Requires a chipset inside of a device. Mm -hmm. 
And it, as you said, it tracks signals from three or four satellites from that constellation, mm -hmm. right? And allows you to, to position yourself within about 10 meters of your actual physical position on the planet. If you could, so if you get a lock on three, then uh, it'll give you a position. If you lock a lock on four, you'll actually give you a position plus your altitude as well. Right. Which is really cool. Now, that requires a chipset, right? That requires an actual GPS hardware inside whatever device you're going to have. And it uh, needs an antenna and a clear view of the sky. Right. So that is the one thing about that. So looking at something that actually needs to look up at the sky, you need to see the sky. So inside this building right here where we've got a roof, not so good. Right, yeah. Yeah, and I suppose, you know, I was in Boston with one of these units, you know, in a rental car. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're going through tunnels, and all of a sudden, right. GPS goes out. Right. It right. can't see the sky. It can't get the signal from the satellite. So therefore, it's useless. Yeah. Although you know you're in the tunnel, and as soon as you emerge from the tunnel, it'll find you again. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, there's these little kinks. But the, the big problem is uh, when you're, like, we, we use it for navigation from getting from point A to point B. So if I need directions somewhere, and I'm downtown New York, for example, and there's these tall buildings everywhere I go, and uh, we can't see a clear view of the sky, and all the signals are ricocheting around the buildings and uh, obviously becoming more erroneous as they lose their, uh, their timing, then, uh, then that becomes a problem. You can't navigate uh, under those conditions anymore. That's right. They call them urban canyons. Urban canyons yeah. or concrete canyons, concrete canyons or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's the standard GPS technology that would be found in most uh, handheld devices that you would, you would acquire. Uh, it really is the, the basis for GPS, and, uh, and anything else is going to be additive to that. Right. Um, so let's talk about um, assisted GPS, or AGPS. All right. So that's a technology, of course, that was introduced initially in perhaps cell phones, I would imagine. Right. So back in the day, uh, you had cell phones that sported GPS, but they weren't actually GPS hardware, because back in the day, you weren't able to put all of the little bits of hardware into phones that you wanted, because that would bulk them up. GPS modules tended to be a lot bigger, so they actually used uh, something called assisted GPS way back in the day uh, that looked at the towers around. So the cell phone towers sort of keep track of where you are as a cell phone user, because it needs to know which tower is going to handle the call that you're making, and then switch off from tower to tower. So they're already triangulating your position that way, so they actually have found a way to use that to figure out where you are geographically speaking, because they know where the towers are. Right. And, uh, and then the application on the phone will say, OK, the towers are here. Therefore, I must be here because the signal strengths are this. That would make a lot of sense, right? So it's triangulation, but it's using terrestrial signals as opposed to satellite signals. Right. And there's another version called Wi-Fi positioning that makes use of Wi-Fi networks, uh, not uh, quite as uh, rock solid as the, uh, the cell phone networks, because they tend to be, hey, be quiet. We're, we're, we're working here. Uh, so they, they tend to be a little bit more ephemeral, let's say. So uh, networks come and go, and they tend to have shorter range than the cell phone networks. Right. So anyways, that's how it started anyways, with the cell phone networks only. Then as GPS modules started to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and they started to get put into things like, say, your iPhone or the Android, then you've actually got a, an actual hardware GPS module in here that can look at the sky but it's still got the ability to look at the cell phone network as well. So now AGPS is a combination of the two, and the benefit of that is not only can it locate you um, um, based on the satellites, but using the cell phone network, it can locate you that way, and it gives you a faster fix too. Right, yeah, because sometimes the acquisition of the actual signal, it takes a while for the calculation to yeah. occur and to choose which satellite and which one makes the right. most sense and which one is available over the, above the horizon and that sort of thing. So, so that, that fix can take up to 30 seconds to a, mi a couple of minutes in some cases. Yeah, in this case, you can get it in a matter of just seconds. And uh, not only that, in addition to the, the faster uh, location, uh, it also gives you the ability to uh, get more precision as well. So using the two different networks, it can locate you to, in some cases, within inches of where you are. So well, that would make sense, right? Because you're, you're, you're cross-referencing against two different systems. Like right. That, right. Well, and that delay on your route is now 10 minutes. New arrival time, 103 p.m. There is another route that is seven minutes faster. If you want to take this route... Okay, that's an extra feature that we'll talk about later on in the... In it the, is. The, that's yeah. right. That's true. Um, shut up. That was actually two features that we'll talk about <laughs> later on. All right, so... All right, good. If your command is not correctly recognized, please say back. Go away. Staying on current route. Why are we always fighting with our technology these days? Drives me crazy. All right, I guess I guess we're navigating. Where's that hammer you had before? Oh, I don't have the hammer here anymore. <laughs> I have to send this back. <laughs> okay. So, <coughs> okay. So with three different technologies, so so GPS, a GPS, and Wi-Fi positioning. Right. Right. All uh, used augmentatively, 
or for different purposes and that sort of thing. Yeah, and I mean, I think the most common combination these days, especially when you're using cell phones, it will be the combination of GPS plus uh, assisted GPS. So, mm -hmm. um, and then assisted basically is that. It's assisting your regular GPS. Good. Well, let's talk about the, then the, the different uses of, of this, and we'll plug the various technologies that, are, that you're going to find in the devices that we talk about here. Mm -hmm. So, starting with navigation. Okay. So navigation, we'll use this uh, little uh, device here, the uh, TomTom uh, Go 2450TM. And uh, it uh, is essentially a dedicated device for navigation. So obviously when you have your cell phone, it can do other things like play Angry Birds. You're not playing Angry Birds on this. You're just navigating from place to place. Yeah. Uh, if they have extra things in here, it is the ability to say act as a speakerphone for your cell phone. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, the ability to uh, navigate using live traffic. Now that happens on the cell phones as well. Um, and it has the ability to do voice uh, activation. And inside a car, I'm still not sold on voice uh, commands on GPS because your car is generally pretty loud and uh, it can't understand what you're saying typically. Yeah. So now that said, it's a dedicated device. You can stick it away in your glove compartment. Uh, it will uh, plug into your uh, dashboard using the, uh, the uh, connector that you get with it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it uh, generally comes with a mounting clip as well. So we've got uh, this as well here that you put that into and then stick it to your wall using, or in your windshield using the suction cup or onto your dashboard. So pretty much a, a one case device. This is all it does. In some cases it can play multimedia playback and uh, maybe take photographs. But those devices are not as common. Yeah, this sort of like they've, they've, they've just looked for premium features to throw into it. But ultimately, it's a navigation device. It takes you from point A to point B and it gets you there as, you know, with as little gram as possible. Right. And that's the primary use for that device. That is the primary use. And, uh, and these ones right here, and we should just note, we can unplug it here. And it does have battery backup, so you can take it off-roading for a little bit. But in general, the battery on these isn't great. So you're not going to be carrying this for the next eight hours while you go hiking in the Rockies or anything yeah. like that. No, I agree. Typically yeah. speaking. So. Now, they run, uh, they used to uh, kick in around 500 bucks or so. Now you can get them as low as $200 or so, less than yeah. 200 bucks. Yeah, depending on the screen size and the other features that are included. Right. And then in the more premium versions, 300 400 dollars yeah. somewhere in there, that sort of thing. So, right. you know, affordable. It's going to go in your car. It's a nice little feature, and it doesn't cost you five thousand dollars as a, an add-on for your car when you buy it. Right. And uh, also, they will. You can update the maps in, in most cases as well. Yeah. So a lot of them have secure digital card slots on the side that you can update the maps. Some of them you can uh, do it uh, via the USB cable. But yeah, you generally, and th that's one thing we should note about these devices. That when you buy a device like this, it's typically designed for your region. So if you buy it in North America, you're not going to be able to just take it over to Europe and get the maps over there. Yeah. Well, unless instantly. you have to look on the package to make sure that it yeah. has the European maps. Yeah. Which sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. It just depends. You have to double check. Yeah. Because anything you add like that adds extra memory, which will add to the cost of it. So a lot of them keep the price down just by having your local area, like all of the U.S. Some of them in the U.S. don't even have Canada. So That's make true. sure you know what you're getting into. Okay. All right. All right, so then the next sort of category of GPS device that you're going to buy is uh, designed for applications. And you're going to find this primarily, I guess, uh, you know, on your smartphone. On your smartphone. So the, the nice thing about having a smartphone in your, uh, in your um, pocket over here is the, the fact that you have a full-fledged computer that's capable of doing a lot of different things. Now, the fact that uh, these manufacturers have put, uh, have put um, the GPS module straight into the uh, into uh, the, the phones these days means that they can actually function as GPS devices. Right. Now, uh, a lot of these phones do have map functionality. So let's, let's talk about the iPhone specifically because uh, we have that. So um, when you have uh, the iPhone you have on the main screen typically, oops, you have uh, the Maps application up here. And it uh, gives you a little bit of geolocation. So it can find out where you are. You press the uh, geolocate button down here and it'll actually start to locate you. So there we go. That's where we are. And uh, now the good thing is you can get directions using that geolocation button and say, go to this address. But it's not going to give you turn-by-turn -turn navigation, which is what a lot of people want when they're using navigation. They don't just want to see the route ahead of time and then not ever hear from the GPS again. They want it to say, OK, turn left in 300 meters. Yeah. Because let's face it, you don't memorize the, the entire route before you go. No. Uh, you're too busy doing other things, like uh, turning on your radio and uh, talking to the people in the, in the car. So it's like, oh, oh crap, I missed my turn. Exactly. So that's free, but you can download other things as well. So On the Android phone, they actually have turn by turn. Yeah. So on the Android phone, they do have uh, turn by turn uh, using something called navigation. So that's a very nice bonus for the Android. And it's free space. And it is free. Yeah, it's good. So with other phones, you can uh, download a specific application. So in this case, we have uh, the TomTom -Tom application here as well. 
and there we go. So it's, it's pretty much the same way that you would have on, uh, on your GPS device here, except it's on the screen here, that uh, can be spun in, in both directions here, depending on how you want to, uh, to use it. Mm -hmm. Now, and all the major, major manufacturers are doing this. Garmin's doing it, Tom's yeah. doing it, all the yeah. big guys are doing it. Yeah, and then there's some other ones that have come along, like uh, Copilot, uh, and you've got... Uh, Navigon, which I love. Navigon. Navigon's awesome, yeah. Yeah, so I think a lot of the manufacturers of these hardwares are seeing the future and realizing, okay, maybe there's not so much life left in the hardware anymore, yeah. unless, um, you know, unless they're looking for very specific extra features that these things can provide. Yeah, My, I think the package I bought was 70 bucks, and then there's an add-on for real-time traffic. Right. Which gives you live reporting of you know what's ahead, you know whether you're going to run into a roadblock, it'll steer you around uh, obstacles, things like that when right. it, when it occurs. Yeah, and the TomTom Tom application I have here is fifty nine ninety nine, and then it's twenty bucks a year for the, the live traffic. So okay. it's it's a similar sort of uh, function there as well. So but a lot less than the cost of an actual dedicated hardware unit. Right. So two areas though that the beyond the you know basic GPS functionality on your phone is you know you things like. Um, uh, these sort of geolocation aware uh, apps, Yelp, for example, mm -hmm. is a really good one where it'll tell you what's around you in terms of stores or restaurants or bars or whatever yeah. it is. Um, the Foursquare, of course, is all about checking in at right. places and knowing where you are. Um, and uh, you know, the next generation of uh, shopping is all going to be along these lines too, where you can actually, it'll, it'll, it'll say, please tell me where you are, can I, can I know where you are? Mm -hmm. And then offer you offers around you and that sort of thing. So we'll see a whole new generation of that yeah. moving forward in smartphones over the next yeah. couple of years. Hey, there's a coupon today at that restaurant just right over there, right there where yeah. don't you go? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so I think we'll see a whole new generation of that. So the application based, uh, you know, you can double this as your GPS. I got rid of my, my proprietary version. Uh, my iPhone is now my GPS mm -hmm. in my car. I mount it, I plug it in and uh, use Navigon to navigate as I go. Yeah, so now the downside of this, of course, is obviously it's the device you have with you everywhere you go, yeah. but GPS uses a lot of your batteries, so yes. if you use this and mount it in your car, so again, you can have a little mounting device here. Love this, the Griffin mount, by the way, I this, love this. The Griffin window seat, and it uh, actually can be used for almost any phone. You can slide it uh, up and uh, down so you can actually put a Palm Pre in there yeah. if you want, or the Android phone, so it's, uh, it's really, very flexible. Really good device. And it also comes with a little uh, microphone that you can clip into the top of your phone as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you can use this for that, but then you need power. So um, you need some sort of device like this uh, for uh, powering it up. So it's less to buy the software than it is to buy a hardware device, but then you have to buy a bunch of extra stuff like this. Again, here we have something from TomTom Tom that's dedicated for the iPhone. It connects in here and then has the power connector here on this side and then a little place to uh, connect, uh, say, your speakers. Right. So if you want to connect into your sound system. Oh, cool. So uh, again, I think this is like 100 bucks or less. And then you've got uh, this clip here, like is this is about 50 bucks. And then you can spend another 30 on a power solution from Griffin. So you're, you're dumping an extra 50 to $100 on this anyhow. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe if you go for the, the rock bottom hardware GPS, it might be even up, but yeah. it is yeah. potentially a bit more flexible this way. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. Um, and then finally, uh, you know, other applications I think we're, we're going to see, you know, ge geocaching and this, the handheld devices that yes. like games, I guess, uh, things like that, right? Yeah, so geocaching is something that's starting to grow in popularity. It uh, is a, a little uh, activity where people can go to the, uh, a website that has a bunch of what they call geocaches. They list where they are using your longitude and latitude, and then your job is to go to that longitude and latitude. And obviously, uh, if you're using one of these things, you can sort of get part of the way there using that, but often these things are located off the beaten track, so yeah. you'd park in the parking lot and then walk through a field and then look for it under a bridge somewhere, yeah. which you're not going to be able to drive to it using turn by turn navigation. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, there are some specific geocaching devices that you can get, so, some GPSs that are designed for that activity. You can do it with, say, your iPhone as well in that case. Right. Um, so yeah, that, that is one activity you can do. Cool. And then uh, anything final before we go to the break? About, uh, we, we, was, there, was there some sort of geo situation with music and games? Uh, well, that, that was uh, the, the one game there. And there's uh, some other things, like say you've got something like Shazam, uh, the application on there, that can sort of locate you in space and, and yeah. time as well. Right. So it's just geo-aware sort of type of applications. Geo-aware applications so, yeah. and, and other leisure activities. So. Cool. Okay, good. All right, well, let's take a break. When we come back, we've got uh, Clip of the Week uh, and uh, your pictures. That's after this. Welcome back to Lab Rats. Um, so this is the part of the show where we show you a clip from one of the other shows in Butterscotch.com. And uh, uh, Andrew, we, we know actually we did a series. We do have, we do a series called How Do I, and it kind of shows you how to do stuff with technology. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of demystifies it, sort of a live in studio kind of tutorial. I know you do. Mo <clears throat> excuse me, most of them. 
Um, and we have a series on GPS, right? So yeah, we uh, did one on GPS. So uh, I did uh, a few different steps. So how to use it on your smartphone, how to use it on a dedicated device okay. using location-based services. So we, we talked up in broad strokes here about what it is and what it's good for, but this is the nitty gritty of how to actually use how, it then. How so, do I use it? Yeah. How do I use it? That's what's called how do I. So let's take a look at a 30 second clip of that. When we come back, we've got pictures. That's after this. Welcome on deck, I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. Now the main function of a GPS device is typically to get you from point A to point B. There are a number of extra features that you can find whether you're using a dedicated device or software on the iPhone or Android devices that will help you find other things that you're looking for along the way. The first of these is points of interest, which helps you look for things like gas stations, restaurants, hotels, parking lots, and other such things when you're out and about. So for example, you find yourself pulling into an unfamiliar town that you hadn't originally planned to stop in, it can help you look for a gas station, a hotel to stay the night in, or a restaurant to eat in. And then you can actually use turn-by-turn -turn navigation on the GPS to take you there as well. So uh, if you want to see the entire episode of that How Do I Use My GPS, uh, zip on over to butterscotch.com. There's uh, how many parts to it? There are four parts to that four one. Four parts to that one, good. So lots of uh, hands-on information there for you. I hope you enjoy that. Um, and now it is picture time. It is picture time. So, so what do we got going today, Mr. Crothers? All right, well, first of all, uh, we're going to navigate over to uh, our friends in the Philippines. Oh. And this is uh, Jenilyn, who uh, sent this on, oh. and it's her Siamese cat. She's gorgeous. And uh, She has I, a vision impairment, apparently. Yes, uh, I remember doing this way back in the day. We uh, gave our cat uh, glasses and uh, gave them a little uh, wig as well. So people... And you gave them a little wig? Yeah. Did we you had, call we, it your girlfriend? Was that your first girlfriend? No. No, it was not. My first girlfriend was the cat before that. <laughs> uh, anyways, the, the, uh, the cat had a little piece of fun fur up there. It was just like, why are we talking about that? I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. So people want to know about your personal life. I don't know. OK, I, good. I so was, that was who? Who is I that? was three. <laughs> this is from Jenilyn in the Philippines. Oh, nice. So. Well, thank you so much. And what's the cat's name? Do we know? Uh, we don't know the cat's name. OK. All right. So send that along whenever you can. Very good. Okay, and next up, uh, this is uh, from uh, Matt in the UK, who uh, plays our episodes in an IT group that oh. uh, he does. And uh, this is three of the people in the group. This is uh, Nathan, Wasim, and I'm guessing this is Matt on the end as well. So Very good. There we go. Lab rats on the screen and lab rats in the hand. Very That's nice. Combination. We love it when you guys use uh, our uh, show in educational situations. In fact, there are lots of teachers out there, and you're using this in your classroom. You know, send us a picture of the class. We'd love to see, you know, how you use it or who's watching it and give us a little blurb on, you know, what difference we've made in the classroom, that sort of thing. It's one of our favorite things about making this show. So uh, you can, uh, is that it? We have more? That is it for today. You can send your pictures to navigate over to LabRats by entering it into your GPS and pressing our uh, email address, which is navigation at labrats.tv. <laughs> It's not easy making these things up it's on the It's not. Floor. I know. It's a little art. Okay, good. Uh, you know, you could actually use a simpler version of that. We, we've created a shortcut, which is feedback at labrats.tv. Feedback at labrats. That's the one, right? That's the one. There you go. Good. Okay. So send us your pictures. Uh, tell us who's in it. Tell us where you're from. Um, and uh, cats, rats, automobiles, whatever it is. Um, and wigs. Wigs, too. We like wigs. We wigs. like wigs. I don't. But anyway. Yeah. It's a strange thing. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for tuning in this week and pushing play. You know, it'd be foolish for us to be here talking about GPS if you're like, where am I? I should buy a GPS. I wonder if those lab rats guys know anything about that. My name is Andy Walker. And I'm going to find myself. <laughs> He's John Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Are you ready? Satellites are frying my brain with the radiation. Wah, 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 wah.